All right, so yesterday's note started with what we call the change of base. And we use the change of base to solve um, logs that are not base 10 or base E. If they're base 10 and base E, we can use our calculators. Base 10 is just regular log, base E is LN. But if we don't know those, then we always do log of the larger, and by larger I mean physical size, not value, log of B over log of A, or LN of B over LN A. So if this is my common log, if it's said to write it as a ratio of common logs, if it's said to write it as a ratio of natural logs, natural, if I could spell logs, okay, the common log is log base 10, and the natural log is um, LN. So if I gave you log 7 of 3, log base 7 of 3, how would you rewrite that in a ratio of common logs? Good. Log 3 over log 7. And how would I rewrite it as natural log? LN3 and LN7. And yesterday, if you weren't here yesterday, I would strongly advise you practice this with, the, with your calculator because it, it does take some getting used to. If I wanted to find what that was and I want to round it to four decimal places... I would do ln or log, and it doesn't matter, of 3, and then you have to close your parentheses, divided by ln of 4, nope, of 7, sorry, ln of 7. You don't have to close those parentheses, but you just got to make sure you don't type anything after it. And you get 0 0.56457, so this is my fifth, the 7 rounds up to 5, 0 0.56. Four, six would be that answer. And again, it doesn't matter if I used LN or if I used log, which is why it's actually easy to check because I could do a log of three divided by log of seven and I should get the same answer. If you don't, then something's wrong. Remember that if you're using a scientific calculator that doesn't store the words when you push the buttons that you have to do this in reverse. If I'm using a scientific calculator like that, I have to do three, then I have to do LN or log then I have to do divided by, then I have to do seven, then I have to do LN, and then I have to do equals. So you definitely want to practice this with whatever, um, whatever calculator you're planning on using for next week. Remember that your test is divided into two parts, a calculator day and a non-calculator day. This would obviously be on the calculator day part, which is next Friday. So just keep that in mind that you need to, you know, just be practicing with whichever calculator that is. They're not average, they'll sum to 100 points. Oh, okay. So they'll be shorter, not all 50 minutes. So they'll be shorter like 25, 35, I mean 25 and 25 or 20, 30, depending on how many questions we divide it at. Mm -hmm. But they'll add up to those 100 points. Okay. Yeah. It'll be like one full grade. Correct. Yep. It might, it'll be two full grades for a little while in your grade book, but they'll add up to 100. Yeah. Okay, then we talked about the properties of logs, and we said there was three that had names in this section, which is the product property, the quotient pro property, and the power pro property, blah, 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 tongue twisters. So the product means if something starts out as a product, like two things multiplied together, then I can expand it as a sum. The base is the same on both, so if that was log base three, it'd be log base three of x plus log base three of y. And then, so this would be, this way is called expanding. And then you could also get the other way back, and that's called condensing. So some questions, there'll be one log, and you'll know to expand it, and some questions will be multiple logs, and you'll know to condense it. And then we did a quotient. So the quotient is a fraction, like x over y. So this splits as a subtraction and again that's expanding other way back around would be a condensing and then the last one was the power property which said that if we raise a power to a power I mean a, um, a log to a power that exponent can get bumped to the front and vice versa that y can get bumped to the back when it's in your exponent form. So this one's a little less obvious to tell the difference between expanding and condensing. But if there's an exponent, then you would expand it. And if there's a number on the front, you would condense it.
Any questions so far, especially if you were at math yesterday? Um, so if it's, so if it's like a log to a power, then you just take the power and put it in front. Correct. So a, a product becomes addition, a division becomes subtraction, and a power becomes multiplication. Okay. All right, so try these. Just two quick examples. You have, you have another question? No. Okay. Do you know if you have a question or not, Audrey? No, I think I, I think I'll do. Okay, all right, try these. So expand the first one and condense the second one. All right, so the first one has a couple of things happening, right? You've got log base three of a squared times b squared times c to the fourth over nine. The numerator is a product. So what happens when we split a product? Addition. It becomes addition. So this would be log base three of a squared plus log base 3 of b to the third plus log base 3 of c to the fourth. Then comes the division, which becomes what? Subtraction. Subtraction. Minus log base 3 of 9. Good so far. Yeah? Now what happens with all those exponents? They get bumped to the front, bumped to the front, bumped to the front. So this becomes 2 log base 3 of a plus 3 log base 3 of b plus 4 log base 3 of c minus log base 3 of 9. Anything else I could do there? Anytime there's a base and a numeric bigger number, I don't even know what you call that thing, but that thing, check to see if you could simplify it. So is there a power I can raise through to get to nine? It's what? Three. Two, so this whole thing is two. So that becomes two log base three of A plus three log base three of B plus four log base three of C minus two. That log three minus just says log three, three, two. Yeah, right yeah. All right, now let's condense. So what do we see here that we can move? Good. The one half. Good. So that's log base 5x to the 1 half. Then the 3, right? Log base 5y to the 3rd. Then the 5 minus log base 5z to the 5th. Now I've got one sum and a difference, right? So the sum means those two are going to get multiplied together in the top, and the minus means that z is going to go to the bottom. And it's only because they're all the same log, which there has to be. So x to the 1 half, y to the third, divided by z to the fifth. And then what's the same thing as the 1 half? Square root. Square root. So this becomes log base 5 square root of x times y to the third over z to the fifth. And the order on that numerator doesn't matter. So if you put the y to the third on the front of the square root of x, that's okay too. But that's as simplified as it gets. You don't really. They would go around the whole thing. So the fraction kind of groups it. Yep. Yep. So the most simplified form of that one half is the square root. Any questions come up on the homework? I know I answered a couple yesterday while we were here, but how about folks from home? Any questions come up on the homework while you're working on it? Okay. Okay, so this one, you've got this fraction is going to split this into a minus, right? And then the exponent on that becomes a half. So this becomes log base 2. If I wanted to group it first, it would be a squared minus 4 to the 1 half 
over six. So that's if you just split it, right? So I just took the square root and I made it the exponent. Now, if I split the numerator and the denominator, it'd be log base two, a squared minus four to the one half, minus log base two, six. So this can be factored, which is where they get these from. This could be a plus two and a minus two. So log base two of a plus two and a minus two all raised to the one half means I can split this again. So it'd be log two a plus two to the one half plus log two a minus two to the one half minus log two a six. And then those one halves bump to the front. That one was mean, just because you had a factor. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a couple of things. I got a product, the x to the fourth times the square root of y divided by z to the third. So you got a product, and then you've got a quotient, but they're both underneath the square root. So if I rewrite this, this could be the square root of y over the square root of z to the third. Then I can break it apart. x to the fourth times means plus log base six square root of y minus log base six square root of z to the third. Then the four bumps forward four log base six of x. This is the same thing as a half. So it's a half log base six of y. This is the same thing as a half, but one half times three makes this whole exponent three halves. So you can bring it to the front as a half and then bring the three and it would still be three halves or you can simplify the, ex the exponent first and then bring it. So it's still minus three halves log base six of Z. You're welcome. Can you do number 17? Sure.